Hello everyone, so I'm Colin Hickey from DMV Jail Software and this is a, a quick video about the difference between hazards and risks or consequences and risks. So risk is consequences times a likelihood and this comes up in discussion a lot with us. We make two software tools um, in this office here called Fast and Safeti and they're actually the same software package. So. FAST does consequence analysis and Safeti does risk analysis. So Safeti contains FAST. So Safeti does risk calculations and FAST does consequence calculations. And in discussion sometimes um, we talk about why some people just use FAST and some people use both FAST and Safeti. So here's just a really simple example as to what the difference is between doing a consequence analysis and doing a risk analysis just in the context of, a, of an everyday office. So for example, in, in the room I'm in here, right, if you just imagine a room there is a window against the wall behind me and we are about four floors up so I'm going to see the, the rooftops of other buildings nearby so we're pretty high up. There are cables around the room so there are plugs plugged into the wall with trailing cables and there's also a projector above my head projecting on the wall. Um, so let's think about that room and the inherent hazards that are in that room. So. One of them is you could, you could fall from this window. So there's a fall hazard from that window. Another, another hazard is that this projector is suspended to the ceiling using some equipment, some screws and things like that. And those things are not 100% reliable. So this thing could drop on a person. And there's also the potential for tripping on a wire, right? Um, now there's, there's lots of things already going on in our world that, that try and prevent accidents from happening and protect against them, so this is fused. Um, actually, trip hazards are diminished these days. You have kind of um, you know, these little embedded boxes in the ground where you plug things into to stop the wires trailing around. This window can only open so far, things like that. The um, equipment used to hang that projector from the ceiling is built according to standards and guidance and things like that. But in general, that's because these hazards exist. There's lots of practices in place. But let's think about this from a consequence perspective and do some kind of ranking, right? So we're just, we're just gonna come up with a list. If I was to fall from the window, then the consequences would be pretty bad from the fourth floor. So from a consequence ranking, fall would probably be a very high consequence hitting the ground outside. Projector landing, dropping on my head. Um, it's probably, it's not too high. I'd have to think about that, think about the acceleration due to gravity, how, how much it weighs, and how much damage it would do. So that's probably a, a medium consequence, hitting me on the head. Probably a distribution of, of what could happen. It could land on your foot, could land on your head, cause permanent damage, maybe kill you, but most of the time, um, pretty medium. A trip hazard, again, pretty medium. You, you trip up, it could be bad. You could smash your head, you could break your arm, um, or you could just kind of drop something. So we'll, we'll log that as medium, because it's, it's an array of different outcomes that could occur. So a trip hazard is medium as well, right? And that gives us a hazard ranking. So falling is high, drop and trip are kind of even, right? But then, if we start to think about risk and we start to think about the likelihood of these things happening, it's useful to put things into, for example, a risk matrix. So you have consequences on one axis, likelihood on the other axis, maybe you like that the other way around, and then you, you split that into a number of segments, a number of kind of discrete segments to talk about things. You might use three by three, four by four, five by five, and everyone's got their own preferred way of doing it. Now what we have to do is we have to add an extra dimension to these consequences. So how likely is it that these things can happen? Now, Let's, um, let's just make a quick list of the likelihood of these three events, these three undesirable events. So falling from the window, actually, the likelihood is pretty low. Like ev even without the thing that stops you um, opening the window too far to actually get a body through, um, it's the, the window ledge is above waist high, and you kind of analyze these things and, and think about how likely it is to fall out of a window. So I'd say actually falling from a window, the likelihood is pretty low. Um, the thing dropping from the ceiling, it's fixed in, it's permanent. Um, the likelihood of that, I would say, is also low. A trip hazard, actually, around the office, think about how many times you see people trip up over a wire. It might be once a week. It is, it is a ridiculously high, uh, high likelihood. So it's only got a medium consequence, but it's got a pretty high likelihood. So we can now take those facts and put this into a risk matrix and see what happens. So. With the first one that was at the top of our hazard ranking, falling from a window, that has a high consequence. So of one, two, and three, it's up, it's up at that level. 
but the likelihood has been determined to be low, so it's over here. So it's high consequence, but low likelihood. So that's fall over there. The thing dropping, that was a medium consequence, but it's a low likelihood, so drop is here. And then the trip hazard was a medium consequence, but it's a high likelihood. So trip is over here like this. Now, bearing in mind that we've somewhat semi-quantified these values, we can now list the risk of each of these undesirable events. So let's start with the same order that we had before. It was fall, and that has a consequence of three multiplied by a likelihood of one, which equals a risk of three. Drop has a consequence of two multiplied by a likelihood of one, which equals two. Tripping up over a cable has a consequence of, should be in this cell here, <laughs> medium. So it's a consequence of two. Ooh, black pen. But it's got a frequency of three, a likelihood of three. So it's got a risk level of six. So all of a sudden now, you can see that there's a different order in how important these things are. And the, the risk ranking of these would be trip with six, and then fall with three, and then drop with two. So you can see trip risk is twice as much as falling, or three times as much as something dropping from the ceiling and hitting you on the head. So the risk ranking gives you completely different prioritization and how you should spend your time managing hazards versus a hazard ranking. And that's fundamentally the difference between um, using FAST and Safeti. You have to bear in mind that when you're using FAST, you should have some kind of understanding of the likelihood of what you're dealing with, because the, the worst consequences are not always the thing that you should be focused on. And that's it.